She works. Okay, I wanna take a second here and talk through exactly where we're at with Rex. Well, Rex is mounted with the plate that we built previously. Her eyes are wired together and run out through what will be the connection to the neck. Additionally, we now have two servo motors, one here in the jaw, you can see right in here. Okay, let me zoom in on that a little bit and then work on. Okay, so I think you can see that reasonably well. So we have a jaw, uh, servo here that opens and closes the jaw. We have the servo here that we've talked about before that allows Rex's neck to swing left and right. Made a couple of more modifications to this mount because what I found was that when I cut back the linear actuators, now we were hitting here. Uh, I'm going to continue to do a little bit of work to clean this up as I find range of motion and where I exactly I want it. Partially because I want to make sure that the servo wires here for the jaw servo are not going to get pinched, cut, anything along those lines. Two wires, black and white, running for the eyes. And then I have bundled black wire and red wire together to run to the two servos. The black wires are wired to the jaw servo, the red wires are wired to the neck servo. And then what I've done is using electrical tape, let's see if we can get that to focus. Using electrical tape, I've simply delineated my power, ground, and signal wires so that when we wire all of this up, we know exactly what's what. And I've done that with both servo wiring sets. Really talking about the electronics now for a second. I'm using an Arduino Uno board to drive the brain of all of this right now. And for the time being, it's just running through a solderless breadboard. The board power supply is the nine volt battery pack that comes with the Arduino kits, you could also just simply wire it into a nine volt supply, or you could go ahead and power it with uh, USB. The choice that I've made here is because servos require a lot of power is to do separate power running to my servos from what's running the board. So the five volt outs on the board don't actually control any of the functions except the single wire that runs for the eyes. Right now, the only power control is running the eyes off of the board power. Everything else, for the time being, is being run off of this USB battery charger for your phone, right? So it's a external USB, USB battery, and all I've done is create a connection out of an old USB cable where I've gone ahead and soldered some solid pins onto it to connect into the breadboard. So right now, our signal wires for both our jaw and our neck servo come directly off of the pulse width modulated pins. We also have a, uh, a pin coming off to drive the eyes. All of that comes over to the breakout board. On the eyes, and I think you can probably see this here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. On the eyes, what we have is we have the signal wire coming into a resistor, which then the out path of the resistor is then going up to the eyes themselves. So we're just using the resistor as a current limiting device. We've got the grounds wired to ground and jumpered between the two outside ground rails. Power for all the servos is coming in to one side of the siderless breadboard ground for the servos is going into the other side and then as I said before our signal wires are going up. Okay since we all know that there is nothing more technically satisfying than watching somebody record their computer screen we'll go ahead and try and make this quick but give a, a real brief overview. So what I've done here is I am using the variable speed servo library that has been created and is available for download for the Arduino and included that library here. Then in my initial sketch elements here, we've got the eyes declared 
as a variable. Those are set up on pin 12. Uh, we must declare each of our servos, so therefore within the variable speed servo library, we're declaring a next servo and a jaw servo, and then assigning the next servo and a jaw servo to specific pins, okay? We then go ahead and enter our void setup, where in the setup here, we're going to make sure that we establish serial communication. Then we're going to declare the eyes as an output. We are going to write the eyes to high. In other words, we are going to turn the eyes on. The idea here is that as time goes on, my setup loop, my, I shouldn't say loop, my void setup phase is where Rex is going to go through and begin establishing communication with the outside world through sensors like voice recognition as well as some type of sensor to understand position and momentum once we start getting into actually having our walk, things along those lines. So then what we're going to do is we attach the next servo and attach the jaw servo. The next element of this, and this was one that took me a big hunk of time to figure out in tinkering and trying to get the code to work right, if you remember from some earlier videos, I was having a problem where the jaw was just going to a full open position. Well, what we've done here is rather than allowing the default settings of attach to drive that uh, jaw servo or any of those other servos to a position beyond where we need to start them, what I've done is using the, the command write microseconds, we're writing the next servo to 1500 uh, milliseconds. What that is going to do is, or microseconds, I should say, what that does is set the jaw, I'm sorry, the head to exactly 90 degrees or as close as we can get it. The idea is that the range of motion in microseconds on these servos is between 1,000 microseconds and 2,000 microseconds. So 1,500 microseconds puts us exactly in the middle of the range of motion. Conversely, with the jaw servo, I am starting that at 1,000 microseconds, meaning that it is starting in its fully closed position. And then you can see that I've got a comment here which explains this for loop that I've created. And the for loop is really just to test the jaw at this stage. So the way it's written out is that J is the integer that we're using to designate the jaw servo equals one. As long as it is less than two and it iterates itself by one, then this loop is going to run. What that means is that the jaw is going to open to 1200 microseconds, which if you look at it is probably about, I don't know, two, three degrees tops. Um, I could do the math and get it exact for you, but it's just a little bit and it looks natural. Because we're using the variable speed servo library, I can designate the speed that I want this to be. So the jaw is going to open to the position of 1200 microseconds at a speed of seven. This is between one and 255. However, a lot of documents, a lot of documentation will show you that you really don't, you can't visually see a difference in servo speed beyond about 127. So seven is a very, very low setting, but it looks to me, it looks organic. It looks natural. And then this true command tells us that the next motion in the code, the next line of code cannot execute until this line of code is complete. What that means is that the jaw must open all the way to its 1200 millisecond position before it can go ahead and reclose to the zero position. With that said and done, we go ahead and have our void loop, which then in this situation is simply taking the neck through a degree, uh, a range of motion. What you'll see here is that I am using degrees, either th from 35 to 95 degrees to indicate the sweep. If I use values lower than the microsecond settings, the Arduino is going to recognize these as being in degrees. If I use ranges that are up into what would be a microsecond range, it's going to recognize it as microseconds. So that's a uh, 
a convention built into the code, which makes life a lot easier in my situation because it allows me to go through that process of attaching and getting the exact positions on attachment that I wanted. So that allows me to use microseconds to attach our center and attach at the right place and then use degrees for those coding moments where degrees make more sense. I'm going to include the code in the YouTube description, so any of you that want to use it to fiddle with, I think I've given you a good starting place to go ahead and figure that out. That's it for now. Uh, lots to do in the, the coming days and weeks and months, and I'm going to continue to work on those. Next up is going to be an attempt to start getting the voice recognition working. Please like, share, subscribe. Enjoy a little bit of absurdity in a time of concern for all of us. And uh, let's just keep making some robot dinosaurs. Cheers.